about 120 of your best friends. <laughs> hey, listen, we got some folks here. Say hello, you guys. Did you hear that back? <laughs> hey, we are, we are doing great. Tell them about what we're up to. Well, right now we're in the process of finishing our breakfast at the Waffle House. Big, big ASP tradition. I'm going to Waffle House Cab right now, guys. Yeah. <laughs> and we're all wearing our team t-shirts and our crew bandanas. Patrick, Phil, and I are on the same work crew. Work yet. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to teach us how to use a hammer. All right, if I had a hammer. All right, you guys have a great trip. Stay safe, and we'll look forward to next week when we're going to hear all about it. You got it. Sounds great. Bye. All right, bye. bye. <laughs> all right. I hope you could hear that. It sounded muddled to me. <laughs> But they are at the Waffle House, where all good mission places start. <laughs> okay, we have a couple of uh, other announcements. There are two cards out in the gathering room at the welcome desk. One's for Elvira, and the other is for Garth. Uh, make sure you sign those who want to remember them. And Kim, where'd you go? You had something to say? Uh, you may. Would you like... Here. You can have this to talk into so everybody can hear you. I know you would, but I'd have to, you have to. <laughs> okay. um, just a reminder, VBS is next week. <laughs> um, July 22nd through the 25th, 9.30 to noon. Next Sunday, after service, if you're helping with VBS in any way and you want to have questions answered, you'd like to get a copy of the schedule, we're just going to have a brief meeting right in here after church. Just to do some of those things. Um, and after that, you start to decorate. We are transforming the church into the everywhere fun fair. So if you're able to stay and help, even if it's just for a little while, we could really use a lot of help. So just plan to stay. Um, and also, um, Ingrid Porritt, bless her heart, is doing so much cool stuff. Um, she asked me to ask if anybody has any old bed sheets, uh, light in color that she can paint to use as backdrops. We could use a few of those. So if you have anything in your closet that's collecting dust, bring them in, please, um, ASAP, because she'll be doing that painting this week. Um, and then the following Sunday, July 28th, is our closing service, and after that, we're having a fun fair of our own out in the parking lot, and we still need a lot of help with um, setup, people to run some games. We're going to have carnival games, cotton candy, popcorn, bounce houses, it's hot dogs, ice cream, it's going to be stellar. So if you can stay uh, and help with that, that would be great. And I have my sign-up sheets, so if you want to just run right over to me after church and get your name down, that would be awesome. So. Yes, it's all free. And everybody's invited. Thank you. All right. And I suppose uh, for visitors, I should probably introduce myself. My name's Kevin Dick, and normally I deal more with this corner of the church, <laughs> but um, with Pastor Phil on the mission trip, I'm filling in in this side of the church this morning. So come back next week. You might get a better shot. <laughs> and uh, this will be a very exciting service for you. Your job is to watch and you know, kind of point out, because I am bound to forget something. I always do. So it will just be exciting for all of us to figure out exactly where that's going to fall in the service. With that said, I think we can begin with a call to worship. What about the sharing the peace? Okay, let's share the peace first. I got it out of the way early. <laughs> good morning, Shirley. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Hi, Jim. Hi, Mark. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Martha. Good morning.
tell me when we're... Huh? In the park, too. Okay. It is great to hear the sound of our church, the, the joyous uh, community that we have. And I, I did want to mention, for those of you who might just be so inclined, we're going to have even more fun across the street at the park at 11 o'clock, so I promise it will be shorter over there. You should head over. All right. <laughs> hmm? Oh, please, stand, by all means. <laughs> was supposed to be my line. I will stand and join us in the call to worship. Jesus is clear about what he expects of us who follow him. What does he tell us? He tells stories of those like the Good Samaritan who care for neighbors in need. Well, who are our neighbors? Jesus tells us to love all people and to give to those who have nothing. And what more does he tell us? As we are to give food to the hungry, he says good to drink to the thirsty. He says clothe the naked, care for those who are sick, visit those in prison, and welcome the stranger. And why should we do those things? We do these things because every time we serve another, it is the same as if we were doing these acts for Jesus himself. Help us to live our lives in service to your neighbors and remind us that in doing so, we serve you. Our first hymn this morning is The Voice of God is Calling. It's a special one to me, and I think it's perfectly common, but I'm told that it's not. <laughs> uh, I think you'll recognize it. And... You don't want to consult the hymnal on this one because we changed up some of the words because it's kind of old and we cleaned it up a little to make it. <laughs> uh, and I kind of wanted to do this one last week to launch our mission people and we couldn't do that because it just didn't fit in the service. So this is our kind of gift to them as they start their mission. And Mary Jane's going to play it through once so you catch the tune. of God is calling his summons unto all as once he spoke in Zion so now we hear his call whom shall I send to relieve my people in their need whom shall I send to loosen the bonds of shame and greed. I hear my people crying in slum and mine and mill. No field or mart is silent, no city street is still. I see my people falling in darkness and despair. Whom shall I send to shatter the fetters which they bear? We heed, O Lord, your summons, and answer, here are we. Send us upon thine errand, let us your servants be. Our strength is dust and ashes, our years a passing hour. But you can use our weakness to magnify your power. 
from even plenty save us from pride of place absolve purge us of low desire lift us to high resolve take us and make us holy teach us your will and way speak and behold we answer command and we obey let's remain standing for our opening prayer please join me in the opening prayer God of creation help us us follow follow the path path that that Jesus walked to learn what needs to be done to serve others to connect with our church and our community to care for those who suffer to know ourselves, to share our gifts, to love one another, to seek and embrace peace. Push us beyond our comfort zones into intentional service for you. Help us to remember that our lives are too short to be little. Amen. Please be seated. Come forward. Huh? Right here? Hey, Telly, are you talking about VBS? Why, yes, I am. It's a pleasure to meet you. I didn't catch your name. I am Godwin Merryfeather, and I'm here to assist you with the fair. Oh, how wonderful. Welcome, Godwin. It would be helpful if you could take messages around the fairground for me. How are you at flying? Well, I am a bird, you know. <laughs> so are ostriches. <laughs> Godwin, are you okay? Is there anything I can do to help? Um, I may or may not have fallen down on my tail feathers. I'm fine. I'm very friendly. I'm very friendly of you to offer, excuse me, it's very friendly of you to offer to help someone you just met. Bye. So we'll see you back again at Everywhere Fun Fair um, when you come to learn more about the Word of God. Mr. Dick will lead us in the Lord's Prayer. All right. Let's fold our hands. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right.
go on upstairs for the youth activities. <laughs> Here, have one of these. <laughs> At this point, let's uh, hear our joys and concerns for the week. Elvira and Garth, yes, we want to make sure we remember them. Pardon? You know, I haven't received the most recent update, but I'm sure Sandy has. <laughs> okay. She's at Knollwood. All right, very good. So we'll especially pray for her on Tuesday. Yes, I am. Yes, the Jones family in their grief. Yes. Ah. All right, let's remember that. Yes. I want to thank everybody for their thoughts, concerns, cards, and prayers for the past of this meeting. And also, I'd like to have prayers and thoughts for the other members of the military. Okay, yes. Yes, that's... God will know how to wrap around this, I don't. Right. It's a, a difficult time and place. Yes, Mark. Um, I just want continued prayers for our young adults and our adults that are on the ASD trip. And most importantly, that uh, God will help transform them and uh, show himself to them in the service that they will provide this week. Yes. And it's such a huge ministry, medicine, uh, the nurses, the doctors, the people that run the tests. It's, it's wonderful. Are there any others? Then let's join in. Did I miss someone? Now have I got everything? Yes. Oh. That's marvelous. Can we? At, at 98 you get a special thing. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Virgo. Happy birthday to you. Congratulations. All right, then let's join in our prayer song. Almighty God, we just thank you that we can be here today worshiping you. We ask that you would be with those we've mentioned today in prayer and with those who have illnesses and, and diseases. We just pray that uh, you'd be with them and comfort them and heal them. We pray for those who've lost loved ones and for those who are uh, serving us whether it be in the military or in emergency services around our country. Father, we just ask that you be with them. Father, teach us to, to turn to you and to pray differently. We ask that rather than, rather than telling you how big our problems are, that you would teach us to remind our problems just how big our God is. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay, our... Let's just stay seated for Change My Heart, O oh God. <laughs> Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, this is what I pray. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. Our scripture reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. It's the parable of the Good Samaritan. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. 
And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went him away, went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan while traveling came near him, and when he saw him he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Can we pray a moment, please? Oh, Father, I am unworthy even to breathe your name, and so I'd ask that at this time you'd, you'd pour me out and make of me a vessel, and that you'd speak to your people with the message that you'd have each one here. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a farmer in southwestern United States, and uh, he was out doing his chores one morning, and, and the uh, typical official-looking government car pulled up, you know, your basic gray sedan. And a man got out and said, I'm with the government, and I'm here to inspect your property. He says, we want to make sure there's nothing illegal going on around here and I can go and look. And the farmer, he's okay, says, that's fine. He says, you're welcome to go anywhere you want. Just, just don't go over there. He says, do you know who I am? The guy gets all upset, whips out his credentials, and he whips it open. He says, you see this badge? This badge says I can go any place on your property I want. I don't have to ask you. I don't have to do anything. This is, my badge says I can do whatever I want. That's okay. And he went on about his chores. A few minutes later, he heard a screaming sound. <laughs> and he went around the end of the barn and looked, and the man is running for his life in front of this charging bull. He said, Show him your badge! Show him your badge! <laughs> yeah. You know, badges can be a scary thing or a comforting symbol. They carry a certain sense of authority, and they imply that the people who are wearing them have certain levels of expertise. Heroes tend to wear badges or medals. It can be a scary thing when the policeman comes to your door in the middle of the night, or when the fireman tells you that you need to evacuate. It can be discouraging when authority is abused by someone hiding behind a badge. And it's comforting to see the wings on your pilot's collar, the stethoscope your doctor has around his neck, or a clerical collar at a priest's throat. This morning, I'd like to consider uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan from the perspective of the victim. Imagine yourself beaten and robbed, lying in a ditch by the side of the road. The first person you see is a priest. You're in luck. He's got his badge right out there where you can see it. But he looks away, and he passes by on the other side of the road. 
The next person you see is a Levite. Uh, Levites assisted the priest and had very special duties in the temple. Now, to put it in modern, in our church area, just think of it as uh, maybe the lay leaders or the mission committee chair. Okay, actually, Levites did a whole bunch more, but the analogy works, so we'll just run with it. (laughs) Uh, The Levite, though, also walked by, leaving you in pain and in the ditch. Can you imagine how you would feel about the church right about now? Finally, a Samaritan passes by. Now remember, you really don't care for Samaritans. You look down on them. To bring the story into today's culture, uh, imagine that your Samaritan is a huge, burly, biker gang leader with menacing tattoos, piercings all over the place, and an odor that only accompanies lots of exhaust and sweat. His badge is screaming, run, hide. But he's the one that stops. And he tends to your wounds. And he puts you on his motorcycle and he walks it with you on it to a hotel. And he tells the manager, here's my credit card. I'll be back in a week to see how things are going. You probably begin to think that the biker gang might be all right after all. Might even fall asleep dreaming of yourself on a Harley fat boy. (laughs) Oh, sorry. (laughs) Jesus took that lawyer's question and he turned it right back to him, didn't he? And in doing that, he really asks another question. How is your badge? Is it prominently displayed but hollow? like the priest and the Levite? Or is it standing proud in your actions? Can people tell that you are a Christian? And if so, is it a message that glorifies God? I submit that it's not as easy as you might think. Let's consider the badge that Jesus wore. First, Jesus was consistent. He was the same person all the time. He didn't speak and act one way on the Sabbath and another while he was out fishing with the disciples. Are you the same person at church that you are at work or at home? I had a memory from when I was younger of a uh, the family next door We're getting ready for church one Sunday. And it was summertime, so all the windows were open, and we got to hear the whole thing. (laughs) There were two little kids, and the mom was yelling at them to finish their breakfast. There was a teenage daughter who didn't want to go to church. The dad screamed at her. She had to go to learn about Jesus. And then he screamed so that the whole neighborhood could hear, everybody get in the car and where the hell is my Bible? Ouch. (laughs) I checked. Preachers can use hell from the pulpit as long as it's... uh... (laughs) But you know, he was wearing a badge. Badge said he was a Christian, but it was pretty tarnished. And I don't think he gave a very good impression to others. Sometimes you you can be at just a, a terrific function, filled with love and fellowship, until everybody gets in their cars. Have you ever noticed that? That's when the gloves come off. He's not getting in in front of me. (laughs) Second trait on the badge that Jesus wore was that he genuinely cares for the downtrodden, the underdogs, the cast-offs of society. 
Sometimes that's hard for us. Sometimes we just don't know how to help. When that happens, do you take care to preserve the dignity of the person while you help to find someone who can direct them to the proper help? There's a man who lived in the back country in a little hovel of a home that he and his wife had built during the Great Depression. They had very little in the way of material things, and everyone pretty much wrote them off as hermits. Kind of crazy to boot. When they showed up in town, uh, people would stare and they'd whisper, and mothers would kind of steer their kids away so that they wouldn't get too close. Not too long ago, the wife passed away. The only people at the funeral were the husband, the funeral director, and the cemetery workers. The old man's grief was very deep, and it left him with an open wound that would not heal. One Sunday, several weeks later, about halfway through the sermon, the old man came in the back door, and he slowly started walking up the center aisle. Of course, everybody looked, and the mom slid the children over closer to them. The minister paused in what he was saying just to see. So here's this old man. He's dirty, smells like a hermit, often does. And he's right up here in the front of the church. People started looking at each other. What are we going to do? So finally an elder of the church came up and he whispered something to the old man. The old man shook his head. And he just sat down right there on the floor. And the elder, dressed in his finely tailored suit, sat right down next to him, put his arm around him, and the pastor concluded the sermon while the old man wept softly. That old man came to church to seek healing from the great physician. How many of us would have, let, would have liked it better if he'd maybe cleaned up a little bit, maybe changed his clothes before coming to church? Jesus met people where they were. There's one other trait of the badge that Jesus wore that I want to consider this morning. We're going to be out early. (laughs) Do you remember how the priests and the Levite looked away? Well, Jesus made eye contact. He was very genuine in his love for people. He looked the traveler in the eye. He fixed his gaze on the woman at the well. His eyes smiled at the little children that gathered around him. He searched for the woman who had touched the hem of his garment. He looked down from a cross. You know, he still does that today. He watches over you, and he looks into your soul, imploring you to let him carry your burdens to let him guide your footsteps, to let him take away your sins. And one day, when you approach the throne of judgment, make sure he whispers in your ear, show him your badge. Amen. This time, could we have the ushers come forward?
left our envelope and everything at home. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Heavenly Father, pour out your blessings on these gifts. Your gifts to us return to you. Cause them to be multiplied and to serve your church as you would have us do it. We pray for those who will be the benefits of the ministry here and for those who have given. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, before we start our final hymn, we get double cookies today. <laughs> There's some inside and there's some outside because it's summertime and we can do that. So you should go out to the garden. And I forgot to mention earlier the beautiful flowers that we have here in the church today. Um, these are for the Helpins in honor of their anniversary. Happy anniversary. And the ones on the organ are for the Osborne's anniversary. All right, our final hymn today is They Will Know We Are Christians by Our Love. I think, I know you did it just not too long ago, but it sure did seem to fit with our theme today, so they'll know we are Christians by our love.
We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And we'll walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come. And all praise to Christ Jesus, His only Son. And all praise to the Spirit who makes us one. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. And so we came here today to gather as the church of Jesus Christ. So let's go out into the world. Be a scattered church among His people. Having influence on everybody that we meet and come in contact with. Just don't forget, show them your badge. Amen. Amen.